So, like, just going through the, you know, the Tesla mission, uh, obviously the Tesla mission is to accelerate the transition to sustainable energy. So obviously it's incredibly important that we do that. Um, it matters to the world. It matters if it happens sooner or later. It matters if it happens at scale. Um, and that's what the Gigafactory is about. It's about being able to make enough electric cars, enough stationary battery packs, that it, that it actually moves the needle uh, from a global carbon production perspective. So that, that it actually does really change the world. So that's, that's why it's so, it has to be big, because the world is big. Okay, that's why. <laughs> so, uh, the, the crazy thing is, like, what you're seeing here is actually only 14%. It's one-seventh of what the, what the completed factory will, will be. Um, but uh, we've been able to uh, increase the output of uh, the factory compared to the original design by a factor of three. So ultimately we think that the factory will produce about 150 gigawatts, and we'll talk about, about that, yeah. So, all right, so starting with the, the, the you know, what is, what is this, what, what's needed for the gig factory is the, the Model 3. So this is really about being able to make enough, uh, enough cells, enough batteries uh, to, make, to make hundreds of thousands, ultimately millions of electric cars, and to do so, at a massive scale um, and in a way that is affordable to people. So it, it, you know, it doesn't matter. I mean, it, 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 cars obviously need to be affordable. Otherwise, people can't buy, bloody well buy them. Um, so in order to achieve that, there are, there are really two key dimensions that are necessary. One is uh, to make, to keep iterating the technology, to design the technology to be better and better and have multiple versions. And so this would be our third generation, third major generation of technology and then economies of scale. Um, so we're driving those to the absolute maximum with, uh, with the Gigafactory, and that's why it's so big. It's big for a reason. There just wasn't enough factory capacity anywhere else in the world. We didn't have an option. You know, we, this factory will have the output of all the lithium ion factories combined when it's done. Yeah. Yeah, it, uh, yeah exactly. The, the, the basic, basic math was that in order to make a half million cars a year, um, we would need every lithium-ion battery factory on Earth that makes uh, batteries for phones, uh, laptops, cars, everything, just to, to achieve that, that output. So it's like, well, clearly that's not being built because you'd be able to see it on a satellite picture. Okay. Um, so either, either we figure out some way to build this thing or there will not be the cars that, that are needed. Um, so we kind of just said, okay, we, we, we got to just start building this thing and, and hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll, people will buy into it and and, uh, you know, start to believe. You know, uh, uh, we're only able to do this because of, because of you guys. So it, it's without, without you, this, this could not be possible. So I just want to say thank you very much. So. In, in order to, um, to achieve this, we, uh, we really had to design the factory as a machine. So the... A lot of the way that people look at factories is kind of, it, it's often thought of as kind of like a boring thing, like making photocopies or something. It's just like boring, like, it's like catalog engineering. But, but I, this is totally the wrong way to look at it. You really need to look at a factory like it's a product, like it's a giant machine that builds the machine. And it deserves actually more innovation and more engineering skill than the product itself. And, and that's what, what we've done with the Gigafactory. Yeah, we, we have some of our best engineering teams working on actually laying out the factory and looking at how to you know, fit more density and more equipment into the same footprint. And this is really key to how we've been able to reduce the cost of the cells and the batteries that come out of here so much. You know, that intense engineering effort you know, is what the, drives this improvement. It's not just, as Elon said, it's not a copying machine. It's not just you know, replicating things that have been done before. We're, we're reinventing that battery manufacturing process from end to end. Yeah, in fact, I, I can't emphasize enough how important uh, this, this conceptual framework is. Uh, because really, almost everywhere, they just think of the factory as, as, as a bunch of th machines, like uh, basic machines that are stuck together to, to pr produce copies. But, and, and it's mostly pulled from catalogs. Uh, you know, you'll get this machine from that person, that, or that, that company, this machine from another company. But, but if you applied that same principle to product design, it wouldn't make any sense. Like, if we try to make the, the Model S out of parts from a bunch of different cars, 
that it would be ridiculous. You know, it would be like, you know, a bumper from a Honda, a steering wheel from this, a, a you know, motor from something else. It would look like a friend. <laughs> right, exactly. It, it, it wouldn't make any sense to actually make a car from bits and pieces of other cars. Um, you really need to design the car as an integrated uh, product from the ground up. And that's, that, that's the same approach we've taken to, to the Gigafactory. And it's really, really quite unusual for, for that to be the case. Um, so, yeah. And, and, and then in terms of analyzing how the factory should work, um, I'm a big fan of using physics as an as a, as a analytical framework for physics. <laughs> yeah. Physics is, physics, is, physics is true, everything else is debatable, and even physics is questionable. Uh, so that, that designing the, the, the factory from physics post principles means really um, uh, optimizing the density of the factory. So you can think of like the fundamental efficiency of the factory is, is the density of, of useful stuff, like what percentage of the volume of the factory is actually useful stuff uh, versus not useful stuff. Um, and then the output of the factory is the exit velocity of, of products from, from, from the factory. So uh, we're, we're actually just, just applying that throughout, or through every step of the process. Uh, we're actually fairly confident that there's at least maybe a, a five to ten fold, at least five, I think, and maybe ten, maybe ten or more fold uh, potential improvement in, in production capability. And this uh, image you guys can see, maybe some of you can see on the screen, is actual CAD of the factory. You yeah, know, just, like a, you know, just like a great machine, the entire factory is in CAD. You know, every pipe, every electrical conduit, every piece of ductwork, and every piece of equipment building the cells. So you know, we've modeled all that to fit it in you know, with the littlest, the minimum wasted space. Everything is basically almost touching each other on every floor. So you know, that was necessary to, to build this amazing machine. And many factories aren't done this way. They're just, you build a shell, and then you sort of randomly put equipment in there. But this was very different. Yeah, it's essentially designed like a, a very um, high, um, high density, multi-layer uh, integrated circuit, like a, an advanced CPU, which is uh, really, I mean, actually, when you think about it, it's like obviously how it should be, should be done. Um, and I think actually over time, the manufacturing process uh, may look a lot like one of those super fast chip pick and place machines. Um, it's super optimized for speed and density. I mean, if you think about it, like, how, how did we improve the capability of your phone or your, or your laptop? It wasn't by making a really giant computer the size of a table. It was by increasing the clock speed and the density. And those same principles apply, apply to manufacturing. So I'm really excited about revitalizing manufacturing. I think it's, it's sort of, it, it, it needs love, and we're going to give it. <laughs> So, and, yeah, go ahead. And, and we're also expanding the scope of what people typically thought of as a battery factory. You know, we're going all the way from basic, the basic raw materials that, that go into making up a cell, you know, all the way through to the finished battery packs under, under one roof in this single factory. You know, historically, <laughs> it's gone between a lot of different factories. Yes, yeah, so it's a, it's a three-step process, <laughs> which we've outlined for you. All of our secrets are right here. Raw material, bunch of stuff happens, out comes a car. So, <laughs> so the, 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 the vertical integration is it, it's pretty important because like, one way to think of manufacturing efficiency is how long a journey did that molecule take from when it was mined. So if it was mined in one part of the world, then went, to, went halfway across the world to get processed, then back halfway across the world to get processed another way, and, and, and eventually does several trips around the world before it finally ends up in a finished product, that's obviously just a, fu like, that, that's fundamentally going to be expensive. <laughs> it's like, you just can't send things on round the world trips and expect it to be cheap it's, it's, or, or affordable. It's just not going not gonna to happen. So it makes sense, ultimately, for for rail cars of raw materials to come in one side, um, and then for finished vehicles to exit the, the other side. So, I mean, t today we've, we, it's sort of split up. We've got the vehicle factory um, in, in Fremont, California. We've got the, the, the battery factory um, here in Nevada. Um, 
But um, I think for Gigafactory 2 and beyond, I think we're, gonna, we're just going to integrate that into one, one big facility. Yeah. And, and just to give you a sense of scale, you know, that I think you guys have seen the models. You've, you've, hopefully, many of you have gone on tours. But to make it sort of more, you know, more real, you know, this factory is going to be about 6 million square feet of ground area. When that, it's that's completed. just the footprint, yeah. It's just the footprint. It, it, it'll be the, the, the biggest building in the world, biggest single building in the world by footprint, um, and second only in volume to the, the Boeing factory in Washington State. Yeah. It, it's really, really huge. And if you sort of think of you know, something that maybe you're familiar with, like a 747, that's pretty big, right? Well, right. we can fit about 100 747s parked in the footprint of this building. Yeah, and, and I mean, not only that, I mean, we can fit 50 billion hamsters. <laughs> <laughs> so, but in terms of vehicles, um, the, uh, we actually expect to get to uh, 50 gigawatt hours a year of output uh, in two years. Uh, to give you a sense of, of, of how, what, what that size is, total global output, I don't know the 2015 numbers, but the 2014 numbers for total global output of lithium ion for all purposes throughout the world was only about 30 gigawatt hours. Okay, so this is, this is more than the entire planet produced uh, last, in, in 2014. Maybe it was, it was obviously more last year, but still call it roughly, Figure roughly that this one factory will produce as much as the rest of the world combined. Yes! Uh, yes! And, and then as we get to a, a couple years later, perhaps 2020 or thereabouts, um, we expect that the, the, when the factory is fully built out, and like I said, you're actually standing, you, you, where you are right now is the middle of the factory. You're, you're standing in the middle of where the factory will be when it's complete. So. We should have another party, I think. <laughs> um, and, uh, and so when, we figure when it's done, it should be able to do on the order of uh, one and a half million cars um, and also uh, provide a lot of uh, power for stationary storage for battery packs, which are obviously going to be very important to, to pair with solar. And, and all this is happening a lot faster than we even initially planned it could. You know, with the, the amazing results from Model 3, you know, we've pulled ahead that half million cars by you know, fully two years. So the, the building you see outside is almost doubling in scope you know, just by next year in order to build those half million Model 3s per year. Yep. So, yeah, it's, it's super, super exciting. I actually really love manufacturing. It's great. I, I, it's, um, I think more people should get into it. But part two of the master plan. So really, there's just there's four parts to it, which is to make uh, beautiful solar combined with battery storage, uh, to expand to all of the major vehicle segments um, in order to, as quickly as possible, move us away from oil, um, I, I get to a self-driving capability that's about 10 times better than the average driver. So I mean, that's a lot of lives saved. So 1.2 million people die a year in auto accidents. So that's a lot of potential for, uh, for, for lives saved there. Um, and then um, the ability to uh, add your car to a shared fleet whenever you want. So whenever your car's, whenever you're not using your car, uh, you'll be able to just tap, tap the Tesla app on your on your phone and add it to add it or subtract it to the shared fleet. Yes. Um, and you'll be able to define like, well, you know, who who can use it? Like only five star users or anyone or yeah. only family or whatever. Um, and then whenever you want it back, uh, you can just tap tap it and it will return to you. So, so the you know most of the time when you look at cars, they're they're sitting in a parking lot somewhere, and they're not being used. And um, this this has the potential to massively amplify the utility of, of vehicles um, and offset the cost of ownership. And it's and it's totally yes. it'll be totally up to you when you want to do it or not do it. It's it's, it's all yours. It will find <laughs> it will it will find Pokemon for you. Absolutely, of course, of course. <laughs> and 
You know, as we said earlier, you know, a lot of people, you know, really doubted that there would be enough demand, you know, to even make a factory like this make sense in this time frame. You know, we started this, you know, way before the Model 3, you know, launch event, before we had all those reservations. And, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, it's, it's really a, a tribute to all of you guys as customers that are making this possible. So, so yeah, really, really thank all of you for doing this. Um, so, I mean, that, that's basically the overview of the, the Gigafactory um, and, uh, and what we're up to. There's, there's a lot of, lot of stuff to do already on our plate, but um, I, think, I think we better wrap it up with that. So yeah. thank you guys very much. This is right, awesome. Thank you very much. We really appreciate it. All right.